Somebody make some noise. I got a little help. Trisha Green, won't you tell them how you feel about it? Say Good morning, St. Louis. We've made it to the end of 2020. We are here. We come to give God praise. Anybody glad to be in service this morning?
listen, we come to give God joy. He's given us joy to the world, so we come to give it back to Him. Come on and clap your hands. Let's give God praise. Yes. Hallelujah. about to have some church in here this morning. God's been good to us. In spite of everything we went through in 2020, God is still good. Amen. Amen. everybody this is the day the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it I am Cliff Matthews the proud pastor of the St. Luke Missionary Baptist Church here in Charlotte North Carolina and I want to say welcome to you to our uh, first service after Christmas the first Sunday of the Christmas season and I want to say welcome to you and thanks for taking time out of your schedule to join us today in worship if you are a first time worshiper with us, welcome to the St. Luke Baptist Church community. Uh, we would love for you to register your presence with us by simply typing in the comment section now uh, that you are a first time worshiper or visitor. If you see that St. Luke, please give them a great bit St. Luke shout out. Tell them God loves them and so do you. If you are a returning worshiper with us, thank you for your commitment to come back even on this Sunday after Christmas. Amen. So thank you for that. You know what we do here. We're going to ask first that you share this link on your Facebook page and invite family and friends and co-workers to come and join us for this worship celebration today. 
And we're going to ask that throughout the service, as you are worshiping with us, that you uh, uh, let us know that you are moved when you uh, use your thumb symbol, your heart symbol, or another emoji. You're not just a spectator. You are a worshiper with us today. Well, today we are blessed to have our worship ministry in place. Our production team is also in place. Thank you for joining us. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas day. And now we are getting ready to enjoy this Christmas season uh, for the next couple of Sundays. Well, beloved, I would like for you now to join in with me as together we come before God and we give our call to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise the Lord. Please join us now in singing that great Christian hymn, Hark the Herald the Angels Sing. at this time I invite you to join in with me as together we confess our sin against God and our neighbors. Source of all hope, you invite us to live in the light and to experience the splendor of your glory. We confess that we have, we are reluctant to embrace this new life and choose instead to remain in the darkness. We allow our fears and hurts to hold us hostage and our illusions to hold us back from new and real possibilities. You offer us unconditional love, but we expect our own love to be earned. Forgive us 
and create us anew in the image of your Son, in whose name we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, rest in the promises of Scripture. If we confess our sin, our God is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And to that the church ought to say, Amen. Now this time, beloved, I invite you to join in, please, in our scripture reading for this morning, found in the Hebrew Bible or the Old Testament, the book of Psalms, Psalms 148. And I'm reading this morning from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters in all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, Kings of the earth and all people, princes and rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light and kindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the St. Luke News Network. I'm MJ3, and these are your notices announcements for December 2020. It's the Advent season, so we have a special Bible study for you. It's called The Light of the World. It's gonna follow the stories of Mary, Zachariah, Elizabeth, and their journey to Bethlehem, and of course, a visit from the Magi. This four-part Advent series will provide participants with rich and challenging learning experiences as we discover the light of the world. So again, join us right here, 12 noon on Tuesdays for virtual Bible study with our very own pastor, senior pastor, Reverend Clifford Matthews Jr. We'll see you then. Well, as you can see, we have a lot happening here at St. Luke. And how are you gonna keep up with everything? Well, the best way is by becoming a member in the know. All you have to do is text the keyword no. K-N-O-W to the number that you see on the screen, and that will enroll you in Members in the Know. It's our text-based message service, and we will reach out to you with all the winter updates that we have all winter long. Also, to stay in touch, all of our members that are watching right now, go ahead and join Members of St. Luke. It's our brand new Facebook group. Look, we encourage you to post throughout this holiday season. We want to see the pictures of the young people celebrating. We want to see your Christmas outfits and attire. We want to see how you are counting down to the New Year's. So be active in that Facebook group. Share your testimonies, share your prayer requests, and let's fellowship together virtually as we continue to navigate our way and worship our way through the COVID-19 pandemic. We are counting down to 2021 here at St. Luke and our theme for 2021 is hashtag St. Luke Matters. Now, we want you to keep an eye out on our social media and throughout our uh, YouTube page and our Facebook group because we're gonna be sharing a series of videos with you from our members, our friends, and our supporters talking about why St. Luke matters to them. And we wanna hear from you. So go ahead, get in our Facebook group. It's called Members of St. Luke. Get on there right now, share with us why St. Luke matters. Share videos, share text words uh, on, on the screen. Share all that information with us and help us celebrate our new theme for 2021, St. Luke Matters. It's that time and part of our service where we want to celebrate you. If you are celebrating a birthday this month or a wedding anniversary or some type of special event, happy birthday, happy special event to you. Type those celebrations right now in the comment box that you see below me and let us celebrate together in this month of December. Listen, if you're watching us for the first time and you're a first time visitor, welcome first time visitor. Go ahead and leave us a comment right now in the comment section under this video and tell us that you are a first time visitor and we will show you some St. Luke love. Before I go, I wanna remind you to like us on Facebook and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, www youtube.com slash St. Luke CLT. It's there that you can find a replay of all of our services and of course the latest edition of the St. Luke News Network. Well, that's my time for now. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week.
Thank you all again for staying with us, and thank you for uh, your participation thus far in this worship service. Uh, don't forget, it's still time. You still have time to invite someone to join us for worship today, and I hope that you would do that even now by sharing this link on your Facebook page, or in fact, calling somebody and tell them to get on Facebook and find us and join us today in worship. Uh, beloved, well, I want to say uh, that God has been good to us, and we have been blessed uh, by God. Uh, 2020 did not turn out like any of us expected. Uh, who would have thought that this world and our country uh, would be caught still in this uh, pandemic, this COVID-related uh, disaster we are experiencing? Uh, this is a lot. And I want to say to you that in spite of it all, God has been good to us. Uh, we're not out of the woods yet. In fact, we need to trust God now, perhaps more than ever. So I want to encourage you, beloved, to continue practicing your social distancing. Continue to do what you know you have to do. Uh, if you don't have to come out, stay in. I hope that you did not have a spreader event on uh, Christmas Day, amen, that you kept your numbers low and you kept with folk within your bubble. Uh, this is going to be a difficult next few months, and we need to all work together, pray together, and support each other as we live through this. Now, beloved, I want to also say thank you for your participation on last week, on this, yeah, last week, for your participation, first of all, on last Sunday. Uh, our musical. It was awesome, and thank you for that. We are so proud and thankful for the awesome talent that God has placed within St. Luke. I want to say thank you for joining us for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day worship. Uh, St. Luke is committed to honoring Christ, and thank you for your participation and support. Now we have watch night service coming up, and we'll see you on watch night. Uh, and you have a chance to worship with us as well. Invite somebody to come out uh, and know that we are looking forward to starting a new year, uh, believing that God has us and everything is going to be all right. We are going to schedule some kind of event towards the end of the month uh, where we will be able to talk via Zoom uh, and go over what God has done for us in 2020 and talk about the vision that God has given us for the year 2021. Uh, we are committed, uh, as we were in 2020, to be a thriving church, still thriving. Uh, this year coming up, our theme will be St. Luke Matters, and I hope that it matters to you. Well, beloved, thank you again for coming out. I want us to get ready now to go to God in prayer. I want to lift up those who have lost loved ones in the last few weeks. I want to be in prayer for Sister Dolores Sexton, who lost her brother, and he was funeralized on last week. Be in prayer for that family, that God will continue to bless and to hold them. 
be in prayer for others who have loved ones who are struggling and who are uh, leaving here because of COVID. Uh, we lift up the loss of a relative of Sister Janet, uh, Janet Smith, lost a uh, loved one, and we pray that God will continue to bless her and her family as they uh, walk through this time. Be in prayer for others who have lost jobs and who are trying to hold it together. I uh, pray that God would meet them and help them through this difficult time and that God will use us to be instruments of blessing in their lives. You may have other prayer requests, and I hope that you do. I invite you now, even now, uh, to place those on Facebook in the comment section as we get ready to go to God in prayer, being led by our worship ministry uh, at this time. And after they lead us in this selection, I will come back and uh, lead us to God's throne of grace and mercy. Let's go to God in prayer. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on our way, we come before your presence on this last Sunday of a year that has rocked this your world, our nation, our state, our city, and our homes. Dear God, we come proclaiming that even in the midst of it all, that your son is still the light that shines in darkness. And for that, we give you thanks today. We thank you that you have already worked this thing out, that you are still in charge, that you are moving according to your plan, that you know what you are doing, Give us strength to trust, even when our fears grow, our minds begin to wander, and we don't know really what the next move will be. Dear God, we lift up to you now those who lost loved ones. Comfort them, keep them, hold them now tightly in your grip, and let them know that you're with them no matter what. We pray for those, dear God, essential workers who are out in the midst of this. Pray that God will give them strength, covering, and protection, not only on them, but on the family as they return home to day after day. Dear God, we pray for this country. Dear God, we need you right now. Not only is darkness the reality because of COVID, but dear God, we need you to touch this country old fears old wounds are being opened dear God we need you right now to bring us together as a country to help us learn how to love one another as your Bible teaches us to do now dear God we ask you to bless this church called St. Luke Hold her in your hands, and dear God, continue to use her for your glory. This is the prayer we ask in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen.
let's sing together. If it had not.
got any reasons this morning, come on and clap your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah.
Let the church say amen. Well, St. Luke, today, this last Sunday of 2020, I want to bring a message that really talks about what we are called to be. I want to do that by taking us first to the Hebrew Bible or the Old Testament, the Old Testament book of Lamentations, tucked away between Jeremiah and Ezekiel. And then I want to go to the New Testament, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, starting in verse number 14. Lamentations, chapter 3, starting in verse number 16. And then Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, starting in verse 14. And I'm reading this morning from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, where you will find these words. Lamentations, chapter 3. God has made my teeth grind on gravel and made me cower in ash. My soul is bereft of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. So I say, gone is my glory and all that I hoped for from the Lord. The thought of my affliction and my homelessness is wormwood and gall. My soul continually thinks of it and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it in under the bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. I want to talk about, with the help of God today for about 20 minutes, being a ray of hope. Being a ray of hope of hope. Let us pray. Father, where I am, you brought me. What I know, you taught me. What I have, you gave me. And what I am, Lord, you made me. Lord, I am depending on you. Can't do nothing till you come. This is your servant's prayer. I ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. Being a ray of hope, we are told that we have much to learn from our elders. We are reminded that for some of us, we are still, though in our 50s, not quite old enough yet to know how things are. We are challenged to allow those who have lived through something to tell us how they did it, to inform us about how they got through. It's a sad thing, is it not, to have someone turn their back on wisdom, not learned in a book, 
but gathered by lived experience. Today, beloved, I want us to walk together for a little bit and learn from the wisdom of our ancestors of faith found in this small book tucked away between Jeremiah and Ezekiel. This book of Lamentation really is a book that is intended to give us wisdom to live through a dark and difficult time. This particular book comes to us at a low point in Israel's life. Those of you who know scripture and who know Bible history would know that even though the prophets of Israel warned Israel to turn towards God, Israel was slow in turning, just as we are. And judgment showed up in the form of the Babylonians and Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar and his forces came into Jerusalem as an occupying military force they took the city, tore down the walls, desecrated the temple, and left blood shed all throughout Jerusalem. Imagine living through that period where one day life was normal and the next day everything turned upside down. Have you ever been there before? One day things seem to be okay. And then from out of nowhere, here comes a virus. A virus that we can't even pronounce by name. But now we know it intimately. Israel was taken over by the Babylonians. And to add insult to injury, Nebuchadnezzar led many of them out and forced them to live in Babylon, where for some it was just too much. There, they said, they hung up their harps. How could they sing the Lord's song in a strange land? They had lost it all. Not only was the temple destroyed, the infrastructure was ruined. Imagine your purity laws, your laws of ceremonial clean, cleanliness being destroyed by this occupying Gentile force. Women and children were slaughtered. Men's coarse corpse lay waste on the street. It was hard to perhaps walk around the city without having your souls drenched by the blood that was shed in that city. Imagine the stench of decaying bodies everywhere. And imagine how long before the city was taken, imagine how it was under siege. Imagine food running out. Imagine it's in the text here, read the book. Imagine the imagery of women actually devouring their own children in order to make it to another day. All of this brought Israel to a low point. It brought Israel to a point where they questioned, where is God? And they questioned, why God? I know y'all have not been there before because y'all are holy. and Y'all are Christian and y'all are great. But beloved, sometimes life will bring us to a point where questions we dare not ask before roll all too easily off of our lips. That's what happened here. They were going through, what do you do when your world has been turned upside down? Do you pretend it didn't happen? 
Do you pretend it's just not real? Do you take the posture that is fake news and you have alternative facts? What do you do when you're living at a time where everything that you thought you knew was now brought into question, not only the world in which you live, but also your faith in the God that you thought you knew. That's where they were in the book of Lamentations. They understood that when your world is turned upside down, you need to get somewhere and lament, cry, grieve, mourn, feel the pain that you should feel because as humans, there's only so much we can take before we are broken beyond repair. They understood that somehow to hold things together, you've got to take the pressure off of your life by getting somewhere and just being real. That's what we have in Lamentations, a collection of laments, a small book, all talking about life in Jerusalem after its devastation, its destruction, and the national shame that Israel experienced. This book is given to us in chapters 1 and 2 in third-person narration. Somebody is retelling the story as if they weren't there. But then in chapter 3, there is a great intensity that comes forth in chapter 3 because now it's no longer third person. Now it's first person. This is a person who was actually there. They lived through it. They are there now in it. And they're talking now about the reality of faith in the context of utter destruction. Listen to what they said. You read chapter 3 when you have time. But starting down in verse 16, they're saying that God has made them their teeth to grind on gravel. God is making them eat dirt. Listen to what he's saying. That God has caused them to cower in ashes. A perpetual state of mourning. Listen to what they're saying. They said that things are so bad. Get this now. I have forgotten what happiness is. Have y'all been there before? Gone, this person says, is my glory. No longer do I look at myself and I see potential and possibility all I can see now is the trauma I'm living through that's what they're saying they're saying it's rough they're saying that their traumatic experience the affliction they're going through in, in their homelessness it is all they can think about nothing else they have been traumatized They've seen too much, been through too much. The questions are real. God is acting funny. God appears to have gone on vacation. Listen to what they say. My soul continually thinks of it. The trauma, the pain, the suffering, my agony, my lost loved ones. Their bodies, their memories, all I can think about is all the stuff I've lived through and still living through it. Listen to what he says. The writer says, I'm at that point. 
I'm at that point where I'm almost about to cross over to a land of no return. I know I'm not talking to y'all because y'all are different than that. But there is a point, beloved, where you get to a place where it's almost as if if you cross over this, you can't come back. When you let go of everything you've held on to and now all you've got left is nothing. This is where the writer was. And the writer says at that point, at that point where I almost let go, at that point where my trauma got the best of me, at that point where it almost became too much to keep on living, can I pause here to help somebody? One of the things I've learned as I work in this field of clinical social work is that one of the things that helps us determine whether somebody is at risk of ending their life, it is something called a future orientation. If somebody can't see a future, if somebody has no understanding of the possibilities of a tomorrow, that's a person that you need to keep your eye on because that's the person that may in the darkness of the night do that which will otherwise be unthinkable. The writer says, I'm at a point where I'm about to let go, but when I get to that point, Something happens. Look what he says. He says, but this I call to mind. And therefore, I have hope. Yeah. This phrase, therefore I have hope, one translator says it like this. They say, but this I call to mind, and therefore, I have a ray of hope. It says, I'm living in a context of existential darkness. I'm living in a context of pain and suffering and trauma. But in that context, this I call to mind, and therefore, I have a ray of hope. What is that ray of hope? What is that which pierced the darkness? What is that which shines just enough to let somebody know trouble don't last always? What is that light, that small beam of light that points somebody towards the future that suggests that this too shall pass. What is that ray of hope? Here it is. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Get this now. The Hebrew, the hesed of God, the covenant love of God will never stop. And it says, God's mercies, they will never come to an end. There's a whole lot they would say that may come to an end. Yeah, my home may come to an end. My job may come to an end. I may lose some stuff in this world, but this is my ray of hope that God's covenant love never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Every morning when I wake up, there is steadfast love on one side and mercy on the other. They're new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. In other words, even in the context of darkness, when everything is looking like there is no hope, I have this ray of hope that God 
steadfastness, God's steadfast love, God's mercy, they are always there. That is for the writer their ray of hope. Beloved, I've come to tell you that's what we as church ought to be. We ought to be a ray of hope. Right now we are living through perhaps one of the darkest times in our nation's history. You have to go back to slavery and the horrors of Jim Crow to see something even similar or close to it. This is not the pandemic of 1918. This is something that has rocked this country and has brought it almost to its knees. In the absence of strong leadership, in the absence of somebody who really cares, this country has allowed itself, the strongest, most powerful nation in the world, to be brought to its knees by a virus that other countries have already learned how to manage. But yet here we are, 10 months in, and over 310,000 individuals have lost their lives. Here we are now, 10 months in, and we are watching the disproportionality of black and brown folk who are losing their lives or suffering for months with the after facts or the aftermath of this kind of this virus. We are watching now how the economic vitality that has been gained or regained by some in 2010 after that great recession is being washed away. We're watching as our children, especially our black and brown children, are falling further and further behind. And the educational gap that was already there is getting wider and wider. We are watching now how families are barely holding on, how they're not able to pay the rent or the light bill. They're trying to figure out what to do. They're selling cars, they're selling jewelry, they're selling whatever they can in order just to make it. We are living in dark times. What we need now, we need for somebody to step up and be a ray of hope to tell somebody trouble don't last always. There is a tomorrow that has your name on it. We need someone to stand up and be a light that shines in the darkness to point someone to the hope that we have. And I want to tell you that's what we are called to be as church. Let it be done. Let's not go back to a time where all we could talk about is how much fun we had in church. How the choir was this and the preaching was that and how people got caught up in the spirit, all that. Yeah, that's great. But right now, God is not looking for those who know how to praise and worship as much as God is looking for folk who can show up in dark places and be the light that shines in the darkness. Light doesn't speak. Light doesn't have to draw attention to itself. I dare you, if you ever go to your home and turn on the light, that light bulb never says to you, good morning, good evening, how you doing? It doesn't ask you questions. It's not trying to take the center stage. It's not competing against somebody over on their left or on their right. It's not trying to shine brighter than someone else. It's not trying to be bigger than another light. It's not trying to get all the glory. All it does is shine. Without saying a word, it pierces the darkness. That's what we're called to be now. In this world, we are called to be 
rays of hope. That's the church. That's what our assignment is. And that's what I pray we do now more than ever. That we'll begin to shine in the darkness that's all around us. People need to see the light that pushes them towards a future that tells them, don't stop here. There's a future that you can get to. We are to be ray hope. The church is a ray of hope. We shine in the darkness and we help folks see the way they can go. Jesus said that in Matthew's gospel. Jesus talked to those who will follow him, and Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Shine, therefore. Don't cover up the light by putting a basket over it, but shine. Old folk used to sing a song, shine on me. Yeah, they weren't talking about shining on them so they can get all the glory, but they were talking about if you shine on me, I'll radiate in the world and somebody will see your glory and give you the glory that's worthy of your name. I'm telling you today, beloved, God is calling the church to be the ray of hope. That's what we're called to be. And I pray that going forward, we all would dare to allow ourselves to be that ray of hope. Collectively, yes, but individually, somebody ought to look at you on that job and see something different about you. Stop taking your Bible and your cross to work to let folk know how spiritual you are. You ought to just show up in a dark space and sit down where you are. And when you show up and sit down, somebody will know there is a God that I can trust. Someone needs to know that. They need to see your light shine. As church, we must let our light shine. We are the light of the world. But I'm going to tell you, our assignment is to always point people to that ultimate light. The ultimate light that shines in the darkness is the light that was birthed in Bethlehem. It is the light that was baptized by John. It is the light that went to the cross on a Friday. It is the light that got up early Sunday morning. It is the light that keeps on shining in darkness. It is the light that comforted our ancestors. It is the light that gave your grandma a reason to get up every morning. It is the light that put joy in your mother's bosom. It is the light that kept your mind together when you felt like giving up. Jesus is the light that shines in the darkness. And we are to reflect that light in the world in which we live. My time is up. I thank you for yours. Let your light shine. You are a ray of hope. Shine in a dark world so God can get to glory. Somebody needs you. Somebody needs you now more than ever. They need to know there's a way forward. Shine. Be the ray of hope that God has called us to become, to be in this world. God loves you, and so do I. Thank you. And may heaven smile upon you. Let us pray to God, I thank you for reminding us that we are to be a ray of hope in a world of darkness. Dear God, we pray you bless us. Use us for your glory. We ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Well, beloved, I want to thank you for being with us today on this fourth Sunday of 
December, the last Sunday of the year, the first Sunday of the Christmas season. Uh, Christmas is not just a day, but a season. And so we thank you for being with us today. Don't forget today, beloved, you can make your tithe and offering. You can give your gifts to St. Luke that continues to be a light that shines in darkness in our community, in our city, our state, our nation, and our world through our various mission partnerships. You can give by going to our Cash App account. You can give by going to our PayPal account. You can give by calling Mr. Jarvis Miller. His number is on the screen. You can also give by sending your tithe and offering in to St. Luke Missionary Baptist Church, 1600 Norris Avenue, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28206. Or if you feel led, beloved, you may stop by the church and drop your tithe and offering, your gift in the mailbox on the side of the church. And I thank you in advance for being faithful in this giving. God loves you. Don't forget, we are called to be a ray of hope. God loves you, and so do I. I'll see you for watch night service. Invite somebody as together we say goodbye to 2020 and with expectation embrace 2021. God loves you, and so do I. God bless you. We'd like to thank you for watching with us for 2020 here at St. Yeah. Luke. We're going to sing Wonderful Child. What a glory that it is.